Hello everyone and welcome to the Practical English Brain. I got some good news for you today. I just started the series of active and passive voice in all 12 tenses. Today, this is the first video of this series and we will go on and record all of the 12 tenses one by one. So I hope that you will follow this series of active and passive voice in all 12 tenses plus uh, with some extra points after we're done with the 12 tenses. And then another series of uh, direct and indirect speech will start. So stay with the practical English brain. Let's begin with Bismillah rahman rahim So uh, before I explain um, these sentences, if somebody is asking you why do we need to use passive form if we can express the same idea using active form so your answer should be first of all if the focus is more on the receiver of action not on the door of action it's not important by whom the action was done but how it was done when it was done like something like that okay or if the door of action is not known, in that case, uh, passive, you, uh, passive form is commonly used in English language. Next, uh, it is more formal to use passive sentences uh, while giving a speech or writing a sort of, you know, uh, academic essay or letter or email or something uh, to, to use passive form. It sounds more formal. And commonly in a news like newspapers, you know, news from TV channels and radios, uh, you can hear a lot of, you know, passive voice sentences. So that was all about the importance. I'm not going to be repeating these words again. Now let's uh, see what's going on over here. Keep in mind that the general rules for changing active sentence to passive sentence is that the subject of the active sentence becomes object of preposition it comes after by preposition by or you can call it an agent of by phrase and the object of the uh, active sentence becomes uh, the subject of the passive sentence verb is changed to past participle or third form no matter in what form it is in active form it could be in base form second form third continuous ing form whatever but you it must be changed to a third form or past participle form in passive voice okay uh, and there should be to be verb according to the tense and according to the subject of the sentence so these are the general rules okay in your main verb of the sentence should be action verb it should not be a state verb uh like for example i like you and you are liked by me you know it's not it's not uh i mean you know common to change uh, a sentence from active to passive form with the uh, uh, i mean state verb not with a with an action verb and the main verb should be a uh, transitive transitive verb means the verb that takes object directly like fixes the car fixes the car so there's object if a verb does not take object that is intransitive and that kind of sentence cannot be changed from active to passive voice so in my other videos there won't be this this kind of explanation i'll be just explaining i mean the uh, uh, examples directly but now look he fixes the car this is active form i mean this is active uh, voice sentence why because the subject of the sentence uh, is the door of this action fixes he fixes the car so now he subject and the car is object so the object of our active sentence becomes the subject of the passive sentence the car in a to be verb according to the tense it's simple present tense so is why because car is third person singular subject so is in main verb is changed to fixed past participle fix fixed fixed third form so fix is here but fixed by him in the subject i mean uh, pronoun became object pronoun over here so the subject of the active sentence became ab the object of the passive sentence 
or we can say an agent of by phrase so he fixes the car the car is fixed by him if you want to change the sentence to negative form he does not fix the car use auxiliary does here in active form but the car is not fixed by him or the car isn't fixed by him uh, in passive form instead of does you use auxiliary is uh, okay so doesn't fix he doesn't fix the car and the car is not fixed by him in interrogative sentences, uh, uh, in simple present tense, we use the auxiliaries do and does. So does is used with third person singular subjects like he, she, it, or you know, singular noun. And do is used with the rest of the subjects. So look at this example. Does she clean the kitchen? Okay, now you want to change it to passive form. Instead of does, at the beginning of the sentence, he used to be verb. Is. Is the kitchen cleaned by him? By her? Sorry. Is the kitchen cleaned by her so now here the subject she is the door of this action cleaning but here the kitchen which is the subject according to you know grammatical structure uh, in the sentence but the, the subject here is the receiver of this action cleaned so therefore is passive form because active means doing something and passive means not doing anything so and now there's another example with the, the subject they do they paint the wall do they paint the wall is the wall painted by them Okay, so this is how you change it. Okay, now the answers, short answers. Does she clean the kitchen? Yes, she does. No, she doesn't. Okay, but here is the kitchen cleaned by her? Yes, it is. No, it isn't. Okay, this is how you can answer. I mean, uh, if your sentence is, I mean, passive in passive form, interrogative sentence. So, do they paint the wall? Yes, they do. No, no they, they don't. Is the wall painted by them? Yes, it is. No, it isn't. And now negative interrogatives. Mm. You have a complete form which can be used somehow in formal uh, type of English uh, like this. Does he not fix the car? Like subject comes before does and not, do or not, does and not. I mean auxiliary and not. And does he not fix the car? You want to change it uh, to passive form. Is the car not fixed by him? Okay. But the short form of negative interrogatives are, are very, very common in daily spoken English. Like here, doesn't he fix the car? Instead of does he not, so doesn't he fix the car? And then uh, in passive form, you say, isn't the car fixed by him? Uh, information questions or WH questions. When does Tom teach English? When does Tom teach English? So the WH question word comes at the beginning, then auxiliary do or does, then subject, then main verb in base form, and then object. Look, Tom is the subject and English is the object. So uh, you bring, I mean, the same WH question word at the beginning and then a to be verb uh, according to the, I mean, uh, subject, if the subject is the person singular is, with the rest of them are, with I it could be, um, you know, M. So uh, instead of does, you use is here. So when is English taught by Tom? When does Tom teach English? When is English taught by Tom? So here, Tom is the doer of this action teaching. And here, English is the receiver of this action. Uh, where do they build the supermarket? Okay, so the subject in the supermarket is object. So where is the supermarket built? Where is the supermarket built? Okay, uh, by them, so sometimes the by, for, the by phrase is not necessary. The subject is uh, like not known, like you don't talk about specific person, Tom, Mike, you know, he, she. Uh, in that case, if you just like somebody or someone or anybody or, you know, they or so you may not even mention uh, the by phrase. So this much is enough. And don't forget that uh, the series will continue and maybe every night or maybe each other night uh, at 6 p.m uh, one new video will be uploaded until we're done with all 12 tenses and then there are some extra points with they will be also covered so could be more than 16 17 videos about active and passive one by one and then we will start a direct and indirect speech in all 12 tenses have a great time for now and bye bye